What we've seen is government spending as a proportion of GDP lift from uh, prior to COVID from around 24% to now around 27.2%. And ideally what we would have liked to have seen is that with monetary policy being tight, fiscal policy would have at least been neutral um, if, if ideally not contractionary. But we haven't seen that. And so what that means is that uh, inflation is being held up higher for longer as a consequence of higher government spending. We've heard a lot about how governments resisting the urge to spend more in order to deliver a surplus is in fact inflation busting. Why are you questioning whether Australia is set to reap the full macroeconomic benefits of the federal government's widely expected second surplus? What we're seeing in relation to the surplus is that a lot of that revenue uh, is coming from higher personal income tax receipts and then also higher uh, company income tax receipts driven by uh, largely high commodity prices still. So while the surplus um, uh, is happening, it's not necessarily occurring because of decisions being made actively by the government in terms of pulling expenditures back down on the expenditure side. It's all from the revenue side. In the COVID era, decisions were taken to stimulate demand. Are there obvious areas where spending can be reined in, keeping in mind we're all due a tax cut come July 1? Look, that's a really good question. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, while I'm sitting here saying government spending's too high, I can't actually point my finger at any particular issue or any particular program that says that something's blown out beyond a reasonable number. What there's been is just uh, an average lifting across government operational expenditure, government capital expenditure at both the Commonwealth, state and local government levels. And so what you're actually seeing is just the lifting in overall spending. And arguably what needs to happen is that needs to come back into check. Now, there's two ways that can be done. The, the less traumatic way is to just cap government spending in nominal dollars uh, at its current level, which is around $660 billion a year, uh, and let inflation bring that back down as the economy grows over time, um, over the next couple of years. A much harder way and much more politically difficult is to cut spending uh, in real terms immediately does that mean that you believe there are pre-election type sweeteners the government simply cannot afford? It's not about whether the government can afford it or not. It's about whether the government should be spending this money. And at the moment, we really have monetary policy stomping on the brake and fiscal policy remaining on the accelerator. At a minimum, we'd like fiscal policy to be neutral and ideally looking to have that fiscal policy be aligned contractionally uh, with monetary policy. Markets are pricing in a 50% chance of a rate hike before the end of the year. If that happens, will it be as a result of decisions taken by the federal government? Look, it's difficult to say any one decision is the driver of inflation. But what we are saying is that there are opportunities for government to help alleviate that inflationary pressure by bringing back its spending and cutting down aggregate demand. Brendan Rin, good to speak to you. Thanks very much for having me.